Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Brianna. I'm Charlie. And I'm Josh. Alrighty then, what are we going over today, Lainey? A Poor Christian Looks at the Ghetto by Ceslaw Milos. Do you believe that historical context is important when approaching this poem? Absolutely. I think that one can, I think it can be taken for face value, but it really helps that this is a Polish poet yes. written during the time of uh, the Holocaust in an area that has been annihilated by And the you Nazis. can see it in the poem. You can just see it. And yeah, it's a, it's a deserted town that is uh, resided by ants and other bees. Uh, ants, be other yeah, other creatures. Uh, everything is destroyed and and or decayed, and the only other resident, the only other living resident is the guardian mole, who is known to just lurk in the sewers and. Very touching, like, very good. Mountain moving for me. Mm -hmm. You could tell that was sarcastic. I think right? if you have the background, it gives it a lot more meaning, and it's mm -hmm. definitely it's more intense. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting how he uh, describes himself as the uh, the subject, the uh, Jew of the New Testament, which is a Christian. Yeah, I think what he's trying to say there is that uh, there's no serious distinction between people, right? It's like circumcised, uncircumcised. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, you know, you are... <sighs> Keeping in mind that uh, circumcision was not as common among non-Jewish people back in that day. Right. Now, because of health practices, it's uh, become much more common for everybody. In this country, anyway. Yeah, especially in America. Mm -hmm. If I do grow faint because of, you know, Talking about that will make me a little. I just said that earlier, but it's okay. But, yeah, but no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter, you know. But otherwise, I think that you uh, are correct uh, with the fact that, uh, regardless of your religion, uh, this is uh, a poem about uh, this being this wasteland. Kind of reminds me of T. S. Eliot's The Wasteland. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just but, the yeah. it's just that particular <clears throat> idea. You know, and whether you are a Catholic or a Jewish person, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But uh, there's there's different. Um, Jesus was Jewish when he and he and he founded the Catholic Church. So, what do you want to do with that one? The fact that Jesus Jesus himself was Jewish, and it says yeah, that that's here, exactly waiting two thousand years for the second coming of Jesus. Um, it's just the idea that yeah, it's the whole lot uh, because. The, uh, the Jewish people did not believe that uh, yes, they were, Jesus they were was the Messiah. They were waiting. That's why they the people that them. converted to Christianity, that's what they believed. Yes. Uh, that's where the split takes place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, in they turn... Are, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's just this idea... Uh, uh, Miwash had a lot of uh, agnostic thoughts in his yes. writing. He, he questioned a lot of uh, what if... Uh, why is this the way it is? Well, why is this going on? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I read on his early years he identified as an atheist. Um, uh, an informed, well-informed atheist. But then he he transitioned back to Catholicism. Yeah, when, when was that? It was after that. By the time he was uh, older, he, was, uh, he had converted back to Catholicism. Yeah, a big process to to mm -hmm. convert to something, to anything, especially with religion. When you convert, mm -hmm. it takes a lot, mm -hmm. dedication, hard work. But it was also yeah. it was Nazism versus communism was another divide. Mm -hmm. But I think that another interesting uh, work of his that uh, has that kind of uh, agnostic or atheist uh, train of thought is uh, an alcoholic enters the gates of heaven which has to do with uh, this part. Can you really deem an alcoholic to be a bad person? Well, the, now for me, it would depend. Did you go home and beat your wife every night? Yes. Or, no, I did not. 
Um, you know, there's you have your functioning alcoholics, you have me, your functioning cookie holics, but um, I'm gonna give that a rest because <laughs> I am so tired right now. But I, uh, you know, it depends on how you lived your life. For me, that's how we would say. You know, in my views, you have to go up when, when and you have to meet your maker, and you say, "This is what I've done. This is what I'm proud of. This is what I'm not proud of." So you're saying it's like humility, really? Yeah. Just letting yourself, you know, ground yourself, literally. And since this, you know, everything is on the ground in utter destruction, you have to really take that into consideration. This, like I said, just might be... This is a complete, this is uh, completely about uh, questioning one's environment. Oh, yeah. I guess what I'm trying to get at here is whose perspective is this being told through? Is this, uh, is this Nazi perspective? It's the Christian perspective. Yeah. It would say... Uh, the Polish Christian, I'm... The thing I contemplate is whether or not it, uh, this uh, subject is living, dying, or already deceased. I kind of got the impression that it was someone who feels guilty. I, I could about say about what happened because it says mm, a bystander. Yeah. Yeah, and he will count me among the helpers of death. So he mm -hmm. didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And he's, a, you know, in that mole, he's afraid of the mole. Mm -hmm. Right. There were so many. Uh, bystanders during the Holocaust and many of them did not speak up. Yeah, because there were like a lot of um, Christian organizations that felt it was like their religious duty to assist those in need even though they were not mm -hmm. themselves Christian. Mm -hmm. It's just the Christian thing to do. Mm -hmm. That is true. Them, a lot, of, a lot of them were fearing for their lives as well and I think that the subject in here is was like, part of the latter. And feeling like the guilt of not being able to act maybe. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Is this as bad as right. possibly committing the act yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I had not considered that. That's probably what it's going for there. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then, like, it says, my broken body will deliver me to his sight, as if, you know, mm -hmm. he's going to get judged yeah. by that mm -hmm. mole. He might, or, be, yeah, that mole. he might be redeemed mm -hmm. by the yeah. fact that he's so guilty about it, in a way. Maybe, yeah. And he's definitely fearful of that, uh, of that mm -hmm. judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be. It's. It all comes down to whether or not they did enough for yeah. their fellow man. But basically, it's what did you do to help out? Am I my brother's keeper? And mm -hmm. that's, it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. of course, why, why a mole? A guardian mole could refer to an animal. But, yeah. Yeah. He's touching but, the buried bodies, mm -hmm. counts, and pushes on. Mm -hmm. And he can tell the humans from the animals by the luminescence. Mm. So it's obviously some kind of supernatural. But mm. why a mole of all things? Why, why Moles it... are underground. They're uh, an, an, extreme, an extreme presence underground. That's just strange. Just why not? Idea, uh, why not God? It's the idea of it's. It's a naturalistic argument, I would guess. If, uh, the fact that uh, if Mo if uh, Miwash was engaged in an atheistic uh, train of thought and Christians and Jews were just groups of people that uh, identified uh, under a label then to pick something that uh, controls the uh, underground uh, environment uh, mm -hmm. you could do worms but I think that moles are more uh, I think that the moles more relatable to yeah. the humans, right? More like I that mean, or, worms. They kind of have a nastier connotation. Worms and uh, bottom feeders like that. I think moles like can survive. Like you typically like nuclear wastelands or stuff like that too. Because that a mole has a has a greater uh, train of thought. Mm -hmm. Worms just seem to act on instinct. I think yeah. it's more like In it's more slightly. human. Like mm -hmm. it's closer to humanity than a, mm -hmm. a worm would be. In yeah, this, and, in this. Yeah. Ooh, I don't read the Bible, but I, I know a lot about it, and mm -hmm. I go, to, you know, I'm not going to tell you what I do every Sunday, uh, but I think I've said it in the past, I'm not sure at my church and all that, so I, uh, but uh, I was reading through one, and I, and it was about the Adam and Eve, uh, this, you know, when Adam mm -hmm. ate the apple, and then that serpent tricked, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, of course, God the Superior said, uh, you will eat dirt. You'll crawl on your belly, and you know, so, and mm -hmm. you're a worm. Uh, basically, you're just a worm. Mm -hmm. And the mole, I think, yeah, as you said, had a better, um, had more of a brain, for, for the lack of better 
Yeah, I think that the mall's a bit more tactical. Than yeah. That. Yeah, and it doesn't have the connotation of uh, things mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. riddle. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. What about uh, the great book? Speaking of the Bible, is that is that the book you think uh, he's talking about? With probably. The mall? It would yeah, probably. I think a religious text. Either, either the Bible, or it's just this, uh, just an idea that he has in mind. The book may not even be a physical book. It may just be a uh, it's a game plan. Definitely not. I mean, a mall is not going to. Yeah. Well, no, he's, he's, this is a special yeah. mole. I mean, the mole is not going to be able to tell a human mm -hmm. ash from a from an animal ash either. Mm -hmm. But um, what about uh, the other question I had about that is uh, the the idea of the patriarch. Mm -hmm. The mole is viewed looks at the world from patriarchal eyes. Do you think that has any significance? In in the world of the dead, those that decompose are king. But uh, yeah. So that means the the mole. Th those that are eating that are eating at the decay because the world to the dead this area really doesn't matter anymore i think uh the uh the nazis had their way with the area and it's just these dead bodies uh they took what they wanted and so everything else is up to the mole who is the who is now the patriarchal figure eating it its way through what it wants and deciding what it wants to do with the rest. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. Be like directly symbolic maybe for like man's implication in it because women didn't play that type of role in war at the time period, perhaps? I really or does it go back to the religious patriarchy of uh, like Isaac and Jacob and uh, the other guy? God is the almighty father. I think that it, I think that it has uh, some reflection to that as well. Uh, or the way that it is being told. Yeah, I, I because um, it would keep in line with the idea of the um, Jew in the New Testament kind of mm. uh, idea, right? If you look back at that at that initial patriarchy, and then extend it, just like you extend from Old Testament to New Testament. Don't pull what I did mm -hmm. in another Almost. episode. Yeah, huh. I just don't think sometimes, mm -hmm. and I just. Yeah. <laughs> We're Italian. We talk with our hands and our mouths. Mm -hmm. Mostly with our hands. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, love this, you. I'm this, is a, this is a good poem, though. I like it. It's I like very it interesting. I, I like most of uh, just about anything I've read from uh, Miwash. Which, uh, I really want to explore uh, more of his uh, work. Uh, he, he actually uh, spent much of his life in America teaching at University of or USC Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley. Berkeley? Berkeley, yeah. Oh, that's which uh, prestigious school. I think. And then he would, uh, after uh, the fall of the uh, communist empire, made his way uh, back and forth to uh, Poland. Uh, he would spend the summer in Poland and come here and teach. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is interesting. Yeah, he was uh, quite a remarkable uh, individual. I didn't think he probably has seen. Mm -hmm. Yes, he had. Indeed. Because he's uh, World War Two. Uh, he was living in the Polish underground as a journalist, and then after the war, uh, uh, he sided with the communists for a short period of time. But then he came to America, uh, surrendered that uh, way of life. He couldn't go back until after the <coughs> empire fall, fell. Uh, so it went, and then he won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1980. But if you're interested in checking out his works, uh, the New and Collected Poems, 1931 to 2001. There's uh, also something else uh, beyond that, because he lived another three years. This particular poem is in the. I think it was 1943. It was 1943. <coughs> it says Warsaw. It, I can be it is in Voices of Poor People is the name of the group. Uh, it's part of the uh, Rescue, which he released in 1945. It's a very nice collection. Mm. It includes a song on the end of the world, song of a citizen, a poor poet, cafe, a poor Christian looks yeah. at the ghetto, yeah, the and then outskirts. So he's pretty much uh, talking about the uh, 
environment that was left behind, that was uh, deserted because of the Holocaust, and all that remained were uh, nothing guilty uh, Polish Christians, and very few of them as well. Mm -hmm. And it's also probably worth uh, mentioning that the etymology of uh, the word ghetto comes from Jewish uh, neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. That is for historical context. Mm -hmm. That's always uh, noteworthy. Yeah, it keeps you in the time of the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading. Keep reading. And eating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.